welcome. Today I'm about to embark on a mammoth challenge of turning these four willow bowl blanks into bowls. Now I say mammoth challenge. I generally do one bowl in a day and that's me done, thrilled and excited. But having harvested all these wonderful willow bowl blanks the other week, I'm going to turn them all into hopefully Let's rephrase that. I'm going to attempt to turn them all into bowls. I may not get them all done today. But these four chunks of wood are going to be the four chunks that I next put on the wood turning lathe. I'm not planning to film the process though. I think it'll be a bit boring watching me working my way through four lumps of wood into four bowls. I will put some pictures at the end, a start and a finish. My four lumps of bowl blank, followed by my four finished bowls. I hope, if I'm successful, nothing splits, breaks and cracks. <laughs> I mainly switched the camera on today because I've recently made a couple of extra purchases to go with my lathe. Now I have a cheapy Parkside lathe and it is a very cheap, shockingly reviewed lathe. But I have been loving it so far and it's served its purpose for me really well. I have discovered though it has the most unusual thread size on its headstock and is virtually impossible to buy any attachments for. Extra face plates or wood chucks or whatever else you might want to screw into the end of your headstock. Thankfully through the wonders of the internet I managed to track down Craftsman who was able to make me a thread adapter. Where is it? Here it is. So this wonderful chap was able to take the thread from my lathe and convert it with this adapter into a one inch, eight TPI, eight threads per inch screwed end. I chose the one inch, eight threads per inch because it's quite a common thread size and I should be able to have a good choice of face plates and wood chucks that will fit this thread size. I also have my eye on an upgraded lathe, but I'm not quite ready to make that purchase yet. The lathe I've been looking at and quite fancy next has a one inch eight TPI thread. So any attachments I purchase now will fit the next lathe that I choose to buy myself. Unless I change my mind and buy something different, then I might need to contact my metal carving guy again and ask if he can make me a thread adapter to fit all my pieces. This is wonderful. He's done a beautiful job. So I have my thread adapter. He also sent me a key to go with it. There's a hole in the side that fits in so I can tighten it up when I screw it on and obviously loosen it when I take it off. So this fits like a glove onto my lathe. Adapting that uncommon thread into something very usable. Now having got my wonderful new thread adapter, I've decided to treat myself to a second faceplate. It's the thing I've been missing more than anything, is the ability to have two faceplates. I know a woodchuck seems the most obvious first choice, but so far I've been finding I'm working very well with my old faceplate and it suits me just fine. The biggest disadvantage is unscrewing and re-screwing it onto my sacrifice glue block. I'd really like to be able to just leave it on here. So now I've bought myself an extra faceplate that fits my new one inch eight TPI thread. So now I have two face plates, something that's going to make my wood turning a lot quicker and smoother of a process because I won't have to be continually screwing and unscrewing a face plate off of my sacrifice glue block. This will make my sacrifice glue block last a lot longer as well because I won't be weakening those thread holes by screwing it and unscrewing it. My old original faceplate can just stay on this piece of wood. It can be my wooden wood jack. <laughs> Fits really 
smoothly. Now this didn't come with a key to unscrew it. It does have a hole, but I found I've got a screwdriver that fits in there smoothly, just enough to give it a bit of leverage and separate it from everything. I'm going to say goodbye for the moment and crack on working my way through these blocks of wood. And I'll see you at the end when I've finished, whether that's later today or probably in two or three days time. Well, my first bowl's coming along quite nicely, except for one floor, I've got this wood knot here, which seems to be giving me some end grain tear out. I'm not really sure what to do with it or confident that it's going to stay put and not make a hole in my bowl. I'm going to try and fill it with some sawdust and then put some cryonocrete in it and see if that will help bind everything together. Cryonocrete super glue. No idea if it's going to work. I start hollowing out the inside of this bowl and it might just fall out. I have a bowl with a hole. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some fine dusty sawdust off my work table. Oh, can't pick it up. There's plenty of it around. There we go. So I've got some fine dusty sawdust. I'm going to gather that up, rub it into this wood knot and then do it now. There we go. I'll stand it up at the end. I'm going to rub it into this wood knot, pack it in as firmly as I can and dribble some cryonocrete on it. And hopefully that might help stabilize things but I don't know, we'll see. Well, that seems to have worked not bad. It certainly set hard very quickly. Dribbled some cryonocrete round here as well. As I say, I've no idea if it's going to hold out when I start hollowing out the middle of the bowl. Perhaps I'll make a point on this one to give it quite thick sides, see if that will help. Certainly don't want to be making it thin. It'll definitely fall out then. Maybe it'll hold in. I've brought you back on, not only because of that, I'm ready to turn this bowl round so I can hollow out the inside. So I'm going to put the original face plate onto the lathe with my sacrifice gluing block of wood. And an accidental benefit of the new face plate is it actually fits over the point on my tailstock just smoothly which really helps i've still got some movement here and obviously in the tailstock which was my issue but that really helps get that center centered up so i pull this in nice and tight and lock me in and hopefully we should be see we've still got movement so it's not perfect so I'll bring in my tool rest quite close to my piece of work. So the benefit of my new faceplate fitting on my tailstock so comfortably and snug makes this process of lining up ready to attach to my glue block an awful lot faster and probably a lot more accurate. So let's apply some hot glue. So now I'm all lined up. We can apply some hot glue to stick my bowl onto my sacrifice wood block. My wooden woodchuck. If a woodchuck could chuck wood, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I was a tongue twister when I was a little girl. Offer a cup of tea and leave that to go nice and cold and firm and set. So that's definitely a lot faster than I was before. And I'm sure it's a lot more accurate. Now I've got two face plates to be messing around with. I did cryonocrete the inside of this wood knot and I've left my bowl quite thick. I'll see that better in a moment. But this is my first bowl for today and I'm ready to take it off the lathe. So I'm going to use my skew chisel to carve into and melt away the hot glue. I definitely want my glove for this because I'll be supporting the bowl. Make sure I'm all tightened up. So here goes, let's take this one off the lathe.
Well, that jumped off with a pop. Oh, it's <laughs> a few seconds and it's stuck to the laid bed. So just like before, I've got some glue residue left to pick off. If I let that go cold, it picks off easier. A little sandpaper around the edge and we'd be lovely. So here's my a sweet out shot, I don't know. Here's my finished bowl. I say I did cryano creep that knot inside. So I'll give this a sanding over and a coat of shellac. And it should come out beautiful because of this wood knot. I've left this one nice and thick. It's got a really chunky outside wall. I don't know if you can see how thick it is. Not really. Right, let's set up for bowl number two. And I think that might be my day. Two bowls is all I'm going to manage, but that's okay. It's a start. Oh, there's an odd camera angle. Makes the lathe look huge. <laughs> I finished my second bowl. Well, not quite finished. It wants a little hand sand over and covering in my favorite shellac. I did start developing a little bit of a hairline crack here. So out with a good old super glue again. I'm getting to like that stuff, it's very useful. A very different shape for me, this bowl. Just what the wood seemed to be saying to me. I've also left this piece at the bottom is um, part of the bark from the original tree. So I've left this piece of bark in for interest. So bowl number two, and we have bowl number one and bowl number two. So not quite the four bowls I was hoping today, just two, and I've had enough time. I have to go and do something else now. Well, as you know from a moment ago, I didn't finish all my four bowls on my one day of wood turning. I only managed to, I finished these off now. I've picked the glue off the bottom, given it a light sanding, and everything's had a thin coat of shellac. So I like them both, they're great. And I'm ready to start bowl three. But I ran into a problem. This happened. This is my tool rest on my cheapy lathe. <laughs> and it couldn't take the pressure and it shattered. Here where it's broken, this is the stem, which does seem solid and strong, I have to admit, that fits in there that way round which way that way that fits in there and it's all shattered here and broken so there's nothing I, to screw this on and secure it by so that's not going to work i've been on the internet and i've tracked down a suitable part and i've ordered myself a new stem and a new tool rest that should hopefully fit this I'm not 100% confident. The one I've ordered has a stem 5 eighths of an inch, which is 16 millimetres. And I'm measuring the hole that this fits into as 15 millimetres. So I'm not confident it's going to fit. We will see when it arrives, but it could be a week or so before it gets here. So in the meantime, I've decided I'm going to have a play and see if I can make a tool rest to fit on this stem. And if the one that arrives doesn't fit, I'm going to need the tool rest I make. So I've got myself this lovely chunk of wood. This is a tree branch from a staghorn rue. Editing me interrupts this video to correct myself. This is not a piece of staghorn rue. This is a piece of willow. It is a different sort, a different variety of willow to the willow I've been making my bowls out of. Staghorn rue is this. It has a very dark inner core, a deep dark green. Staghorn rue and willow. With the bark on, they looked very similar. This, of course, has had all of its bark stripped off. Now back to the video. And I've decided 
it's nice and smooth and a good shape and a good strong piece of wood so I'm going to attempt to make this into my tool rest it's not totally straight it has a slight bow in it this way so I thought if I place it up onto the lathe like this so that I'm actually working with the curve like bowing away from the work that should work quite nicely for me what I really want is a strong support to run my chisels up and down so I've already marked a place in the bottom where I want to drill a hole so I can fit it onto the stem I've already got I've got myself a big chunky drill bit now this is just a little bit smaller than I need I do have bigger drill bits but they go to the other extreme and are too big so I'm going to start with a small one and see if I can work that hole a little bit wider just so I can hammer the stem in would be quite good to keep it nice and tight once I've drilled the hole in the bottom where I want then I will measure accurately from that on each side and cut my wood off nice and straight to give me a tool rest we'll see how I get on let's go and drill a hole in this piece of wood this is quite good the ridge in the bottom of my lathe bed give somewhere solid so this isn't turning and spinning move all that out of the way Let me go and have a look, see if I can work out how to make that a little bit bigger. If I've got something else that's going to cut it, don't know. A new sheet of 80 grit sandpaper. I'm going to roll it round my paintbrush. Nothing if not inventive. Oh, not even fit. That works. I just can feel it is. I'll see you in a minute when I've made this hole the right size. Okay, so I've drilled a bit more and I've sanded a bit more and we're still slightly tight, which is good. I want it to be tight. So I'm going to hammer this in. But before I hammer it in, that last little bit, I've actually, my technical measuring sticks, <laughs> I've taken the end of my stick to the centre point of this hole here and I've marked a red line where the bottom of it is so however deep into the wood this goes I'll know that from my red mark to the end of my stick is where I need to drill a hole into the side of my new tool rest so I can fix this in place and it won't fall off I don't know if that screw's going to fit, but we'll find something to pin it in place. Honestly, at the moment, this is so solid. Having hammered it in, I don't think I need to put a screw in it yet. But probably at some point it'll need it. There's my tool rest. I don't know what this bit's called. I know this is a stem and this is the actual tool rest bar itself. So that'll slot into there. And I've got a tool rest. Yay! <laughs> Mind you, that's not screwed in there yet. That'll help. And this isn't locked onto the lathe. So we lock that on, lock this up. And any movement we get now is just this. So yes, this needs screwing on. I'm going to put my screw in the back, not in the front. That'll stop this twisting happening if I can get it out of here there we go welcome back it's a new day and I'm carrying on with this project it's going quite nicely so I've managed to drill my hole deeper and sanded it slightly wider so my stem will fit and I've hammered that in nice and tight I've measured up and drilled a hole 
and found a longer screw with the right size thread so I can screw that into this stem. So I've drilled right through the wood to the stem and screwed that in really tight. And this is looking really good. It's fitting on nicely, of course, because it always fitted in there and is quite strong. Or well, the bit of rocking I've got is actually, this isn't tightened up here, there. So we're quite stable. I'm really pleased with it. I'm now going to measure up from the stem equally on either side and saw through the ends off of this. I have to take that off because it'll get in the way. This would kind of be okay. But I don't want to be too long, although it'd be nice to sweep my carving tool around. The further away I get from the central stem, the more pressure this will be under. So I don't, I don't want this too long because if my tool's catching, this is a lot of pressure here because I have no side support. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to cut these ends off and then set the lathe up and try this out with a piece of wood and see if I can make bowl number three of my four bowl project. Yay, that worked nicely. So I've cut a chunk of wood off of each end and I've now got this lovely, solid, chunky tool rest. I'm really pleased. It's worked really well. So in we go. It's actually just a tiny bit. This is my original broken tool rest. And my new one's about two millimeters shorter on each end, which is good. The bit of wobble we've got there is actually down here. So I'll lock that in there. Nice and tightly, I can't get my fingers under it. There we go. There, nice and stable. Now the whole, the whole table's moving. <laughs> it's, it's probably the strongest bit of the whole lathe. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got two bits of wood left on my four bowl project. So I've got this short, fat, chunky piece and I've got this slightly larger, little bit thinner piece. I'm gonna go with the large piece and to give this new tool rest half a chance, I'm actually going to cut the corners off of my log with a handsaw just to give me less material that I have to hack away, therefore less work on my tool rest till we see if it works or not. I'm going to try and work, can you see, yes, in this sort of area of the tool rest. I don't really want to be floating off to the edges, but it feels very strong. I'm going to try and keep myself, I should be able to, this nice narrow bowl in this, this space parameter so I'm over the strongest area of stem. Air defenders. I'm still wearing my gloves. Right, I'm going to start slow. Let's just make sure it's turning okay. Something I've recently learned from the comments is someone let me know that this is not actually a bowl gouge. I keep referring it to it as a bowl gouge. It's a spindle gouge. So that's my learning for today. This is a spindle gouge, not a bowl gouge. So I've been doing really well making bowls with a spindle gouge and a skew chisel. <laughs> that's working really well. I'm pleased. The tool rest is working a treat. It is so good. I won't need the new one when it gets here. <laughs> Here I am, all set up and ready to carve out the middle of this bowl with my wooden glue-on chuck, my wooden tool rest, ready to carve my wooden bowl. I'm not going to film this process, I don't think it's necessary, but I will show you the bowl when it's all finished. I thought this setup was worth a picture with its wooden chuck and wooden tool rest. Hooray! Bowl number three! On my four bowl challenge done. I certainly nowhere near getting four bowls done in a day. <laughs> I 
don't know how many days I've been working on this project now. Especially with interruptions like broken tool rests. This bowl was giving me a lot of problems with tear out when I was carving the outside. I was blaming the wood, but conscious it might very well be my chisels. But when I came to hollowing out the inside, I haven't resharpened my chisel and things are working really smoothly and I'm finally getting some nice curly wood shavings again. Yes, I've got some fine dusty stuff as well, but I've got lots of curly ribbons, so I was pleased with that. It's the wood, not my chisel on this particular occasion. It's a gorgeous bowl. I'm really pleased. I struggled on with it and fought through its challenges. I think it's one of the favourites I've made so far. It's really nice. I left it a little bit thick around the edges, mainly because of the tear out problems I was getting on the outside. So I didn't want to risk getting too thin around the edges and causing myself problems with the overall whole bowl. I like these thick chunky edges. I have some other bowls I've made that have this thick chunky outside. I really like it. It's gorgeous. We've got some beautiful patterns going on with the wood on this. So there we are, bowl number three. Where's bowl one and two? So bowl one that had a wood knot, <laughs> so kept it thick. Bowl two, something a bit different, left its little piece of bark for interest. Bowl three, looks like a perfectly normal, easy peasy bowl. Gave me no end of challenges on the outside, but the inside actually went quite smoothly. And my chunk of wood for bowl number four, all set up on its faceplate and ready to go. I'm not doing it today though. That's going to be a tomorrow carving. So we'll call in with you tomorrow and hopefully I'll have four bowls all finished. This has been brilliant. I thought I was an absolute crazy nutter when I started the project of making this wooden tool rest. It's been brilliant. It's really strong and sturdy and I love it. Even when my new metal one arrives, I shan't be changing this until it breaks. It's really good. I love it. It feels nice too. So that's been a big success. So I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully with four completed bowls. But we'll see. You never know what might happen between now and then. <laughs> Actually, just before I go today, I will let you know my intention with tomorrow's chunky lump of wood is to make another bowl with this distinctive me style. The fat square rim, high sides and a shallow curve in the bottom. Now, whether I'm successful or not, only time will tell. But that's my intention. This piece of wood kind of gives me an eye line that this is the style of bowl that would suit it really well. So we'll see if that's what I end up with. Right, truly, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hooray, finally completed my four bowl challenge. Turning my four willow bowl blanks into four lovely bowls. It took a little longer than anticipated running into extra challenges along the way. So I made four bowls and a tool rest. I don't mind that it's taken longer. I'm not in any rush. My last little bowl is again, a lovely bowl that I like very much. It's a little shallower than I initially planned. There was a flaw in the wood on this top rim. So I had to carve in a bit deeper than I first planned to do. But following that cat's mother style that I seem to have developed and it's given me another very nice, very usable, pretty little wooden bowl. So that's it for today's video. A photo at the end of the before and after as promised. And we'll see you next time. Remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it. Bye for now. As promised, here's a before and after at the end of the video. My four chunks of raw willow wood 
turned into four beautiful bowls. This project's thrown up quite a few challenges. It has been fun though, and I have four lovely bowls to show for it. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. So bye for now and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it.